my YouTubers and Engage models uh, tonight. I'm going to do a restoration video on a class 94XX. This is the body shell, it's cast, die cast with a black insert. It's in good condition. It's got all the steps, it's got the buffers at the back and at the front. And what I have before me is all the parts. I'm just going to try and zoom in and kind of show you what I've got here. Beside the body shell I have the motor assembly. This is the contact plate. This is the lower casing for the motor and this is the upper casing and cradle which contains the pole points and the magnet. Whoop, you can see it's a magnet. And uh, beside it is the armature and the bearings which go into the housing. So all of this will make up the upper housing. A couple of couplers. Uh, these are older type couplers. Um, they're not the usual, uh, I think they're called Arnold type. So these are quite old. This is an old machine. Then I've got a wee collection of screws which will keep everything together. In the bag I have got basically the brush assemblies which consists of four pieces for each brush. There is a copper clip, a capillary tube which holds the spring and the brush, one for each pole. And this wire we just make out will be the positive feed to one of the brushes and also contains the suppressor capacitor for DC running. And then finally I have the drive wheel assembly. The drive wheel assembly consists of the centre drive wheel and front and rear. And these are held on by pins so I'm not going to remove them but keep them as they are. So that's all the parts and what I'm going to do is try and go through a complete assembly once I can get the camera back where it should be. Try and a complete assembly on camera and see how we got on. So let me just fix the camera back again and we'll start off with the motor housing. The first point of interest is the armature and the upper housing. I've tested the armature, it's a three pole and in fact it's faulty. One of the cores is open circuit and one is a very low resistance. So I have to replace this armature. So let's take it out. A company called BR Lines, run by a chap called Bob Russell. There we go. And he's uh, great for supplying spares quite often overnight. You've got a website, check it out. This is a Type 1 armature, which does for most Farish steel locos. And it comes like this, and in fact it's a 5 pole. So I'm hoping that will make improved uh, performance. But one thing to bear in mind if you are changing a, uh, an armature is that these bearings, the brass bearings that come off the original, don't fit the spindle of the new one. So you have to make sure that you also order some uh, I don't know what that means but it's meant to be the bearings. There's small black plastic bearings and they will fit the new armature nicely. So here's the bearings, here's a spindle of the armature and you can see that sits in very nicely. So if you are changing an armature from an older uh, Gra uh, Graham Farish steam local to a new type 1, make sure you order the bearings as well. Again BR Lines has them on their website.
this is the upper housing and when the bearings are fitted this should slide down here with the commutator end there so I'm going to fit one of the bearings onto the one screw end which is should be quite easy get it down there and that will slide into this part here in many locals these pole pieces actually come apart but these have been riveted in so you have to manipulate them so let me just try and do that Sometimes it's maybe easier putting the bearing in first. Notice how I'm demonstrating the kind of problems that can arise so that you can see yourself. And that fits in like so. Then the worm screw end fits through the pole pieces and seats into the bearing and then you can take the other end you have to be careful maneuvering through the pole pieces because it's quite tight in there and you notice I've left the magnet out so that it makes them easier to move apart and then that sits into a groove in the upper housing and that should just sit in nicely and hopefully there we go that's the bearings and the new armature fitted now we can refit the pole piece clicks in there I think I'll just use a bit of wire to seat it properly some of the other upper housings have pips instead of rivets and then finally the magnet and that kind of holds it all together I hope that all came in the camera because I wasn't, wasn't watching the viewfinder so hopefully that's all come out pretty well and there's the armature running freely a little bit of lubrication that's why we're there okay so that's the top bit done and these brass bearings can be kept in case I have an older model to repair now the next part it's a lower cradle. These quite simply slide the rear end of this slides into a couple of uh, grooves at the back push that in there and that should sit down there there's a little insert shaped for it and that holds that nicely. Now there will be a screw coming through which will hold everything together and at this end here I have the locations for the brushes fitted back on now I can fit the other brush turn it upside down and the same procedure first of all fit the capillary tube sits in there the brush head with the brush head, I don't know if I can let you see this if it will focus it's not focusing but the one end is flat the other's got a little pip on it the pip is to hold the spring so it's a good idea to get it the right way up there we go and the spring sits in there pushes down in the brush make sure it doesn't go flying anywhere 
set it in, there we are, and now we can fit the clip over the top of the assembly and again gently, evenly and carefully and push it in so the brush sits correctly in there and it will clip there and there and that's that's the brushes in place. Hopefully the armature should still be free enough to turn, it is. And at this point I should be able to apply tower power and see if it will run. So I'm just going to go and get my power leads. Power leads connected. Apply a little bit of power. And there it is. It's off load, so I really don't want to run too fast. Going in one direction. So then and change direction. And there it is. It's a bit noisy, probably because it's lying on the bench and probably hitting something. But that's certainly working. The next task is to fit the wheels and the connector plate, which will involve a couple of screws uh, and this long 10BA. Fitting the centre drive wheel, see that it's sitting properly, and then the front and rear driving wheels. Just a little bit of oil, which I've already done. And then you have to fit the connector plate. And when you're fitting the connector plate, just check that these arms are quite delicate and they're quite small. And it's very easy for these to spring out, make sure they're properly seated behind the driving wheels. And they go in this way because the 10 VA nut holds this bit, whoops, a submissive camera, 10 VA holds there, and that is a positive power contact going through to the motor. Carefully sit the contact plate onto the lower cradle, and as I said, checking that the contacts sit behind the wheels. So I just tend to go around them. Uh, that one there needs to go in, and this one here is just trying to steer it. There we are, and on the other side, I've missed one here, so I just gently ease it in, try not to bend them. There we go, that's okay that side, and that's still okay on, nope, not the middle ones come out again. And I find this happens quite a lot, so just gently in there. Now we've got to that stage, I insert one of these small 8BA screws into the back of the contact plate, and that tends to hold it together. Although I've forgotten, I should just have put in the sorry about this I should have put in the coupler which sits between the contact plate and the lower cradle arm so putting in the correct way which is that one try and ease it in without releasing the contacts so I'll have to check them again that's okay there that's okay there and that one just came out a wee bit, so get that one underneath, there we are, middle one's out. And this is something you have to work with folks, is just making sure that all the contacts go in there. And also in the upper contact plate, the arms have to rub against the chassis, so you have to ease that out there and try and sort of wiggle it so the contacts actually rub against the chassis behind the wheels because that's your negative 
pool. And it's uh, quite a finicky job, especially an older machine that's been taken apart a couple of times. These things tend to get kind of warped slightly. So I'm just trying to ease that in. That's good. Yes, I've now got it there. Uh, so, a bit more tension on the screw at the back. And uh, just a quick check, make sure the contacts are still behind the wheels. They're okay there. And they're okay there. Right. Uh, make sure the wheels are okay. Now we can try and fit the coin rods. And there. This particular set of coin rods is held in the middle. Two pins in either coin rod that fits into the wheels. And putting this one in. Um, try and make sure they're lined up in the same way. In there. And in here. And that seems to be those. Yep, it's coming along quite nicely. This is a 10BA bolt or an M1.5, I think if you're working in new money. Goes through here. This will press onto a copper plate and just make sure it fits in all the way through. And it comes out of the top here, you can just see it there. And this little wire <coughs> the nut fits over the cable and that should just hold it all in place there and at this point this should work from the contacts so again let me bring my uh, well, let me try, uh, try again. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, let me try again. I'm going to bring the power leads across and see if we can get this to work. That one there. And that one there. Apply the power, and you can see it's starting to work. I've got a lot of power on, so let me just turn it up a little. And there we go. It's good. I'm going to tell you something, guys, about this particular little machine I have. I actually bought this about three months ago with all the bits that you saw at the beginning of the tape. Um, and I never really got round to doing anything about it until now. So, apart from the armature and the brushes, everything is as it was three years ago. So I don't know how long it's been out of action before then. So you can see that this is the first time I've had this little baby running for quite a long number of years. And I'm quite pleased that it's worked relatively easily. So I'm just going to finish here and I'll get it assembled and we'll get it onto the rolling board and see how well it behaves. There go. There's still a screw missing from the front of the chassis, so it's maybe not holding the contacts very well. So that's going okay. Let's try and reverse the power. And there it goes. I'm finding quite a lot of power, so I'm thinking maybe it's still leaving a bit of running at me. But, that's my little 9486. 
running for the first time in dealing with how many years. I don't know if anybody recognizes this as one of what we did about three years ago, but hopefully the trees have now got it up and running. Right, let me clear all this, we'll get the, sh the, the casing on and we'll get it running up. Fitting the chassis to the body shell involves sliding the chassis in from the front. And there are two veins sticking out here, so if I just put the capacitor out of the way a little bit, and the two veins fit under two tags here and here, and that should that holds the machine in from that side. This is quite a large capacitor for the size of the machine, so just try to position it somewhere. Let's try this, because this is the first time that I've had it in its case uh, since I had it repaired. So it's still not sitting very well. I'll try and put it in there. That's better, slides in there, sits in at the front, making sure that wire's out the way. It should sit in there like so, it's still a bit stiff with that capacitor. In there, it's sitting not too badly. And finally, this 8BA countersunk screw into the front. My screwdriver, which has gone here. Make sure it catches. Nope, it's not catching. Just needs to push back a little bit. And that's better. And that's it complete. So let's try it again on the rolling board. Power leads. Right, you can see there she is on the rolling road and uh, I've tested it and she seemed to work okay. There we go, nice little pick up there. That doesn't seem too bad at all. And she's running nicely and smoothly. Let's just kind of swing around and look at it from the side. I think that will look nice. Maybe put into shunting duties or taking a small plate, maybe a single coach. I'll decide what to do later on. I'm presuming the thing that run number is in fact 9400. And part of the series probably great lesson really started off at 9400. And let's just turn the power down and go into the opposite directions. Um, come on, oops, oh there we go, that's it. So you can see our little 94XX is uh, running nicely. This is of course on DC. Whether I'll convert it to DCC, I don't know. Okay, let's just finish there, because there's something else that I need to do. As I said just a few moments ago, there's something else I need to do, 
and this is it. Having built the first 948 sets from a whole load of spares, I found that I actually had enough spares for a second 948 sex, and here it is. And to show that it isn't the same one as before, there's the one that I just completed and that we were watching. And that's it there, and it runs nicely. But when I was testing the second machine and I applied power, I noticed something kind of strange. And, uh, and if you look at both of them, you'll see that they're going in different directions. Now, with the, um, the direction of the motor is dependent on the polarity of the magnet. And the magnet is this bit that sits on top of the motor housing. So, which one is going in the correct direction? Well, in order to solve that, I really need a third machine, which has already been working, and whatever direction that's going, that's the way I'm going to make these two go. This here is a third 9400 which I've had for quite a while in fact it came with my lovely walnut box from St Andrew's exhibition last year so this is going to be my test locomotive so I put it on the same rolling road and I'm going to turn the power up and that is coming forward and if I look at the second 944, you can see it's going in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the magnet out and turn it around from the other way and see if that changes the direction. Well, I've taken the magnet out, I've inserted it pointing in the opposite direction. You might just make out a little cross that I might have scored on it before I took the magnet out, turned around so that it's pointing to the front, and let me wind the power up in the same way. And this time it's going forward. And then if I look at my test motor, you'll see it's also going forward. So we're going in the same direction. And my initial 9400, which I repaired earlier in the video, should now go in the same direction. So let's just see what happens. Take the test local off. Put the repaired local on. And wind up power. Going forward. And so is my second one. You may notice that this second one doesn't have a front coupler. That is because the coupler at the back is an older style coupler. And I only have one of them. So I'm not able to put one at the back and the front. And I'm going kind to of thinking maybe use this as a service locomotive attached to maybe a, a track cleaning wagon or something of that nature. So anyway folks, that's two 94 XXs for the price of one. Uh, I'm quite happy with the way that went. Uh, I know there's a difference in speed of rotation but that's not a problem. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's of help to those. And I hope that you like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And maybe at this point I'd like to say thank you to all those who have favourably commented on my videos and who have found them uh, useful in so far as they're able to tackle their own repairs. That's what it's all about. So as I leave you guys, one word to say is keep these rolling. Bye for now.